All right. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, good, Karibuni. Good morning, Mugiani. And Yvonne, I can see you joined. Uh, good to have you. I think it's good that we get started. The rest will join us as we move along. Um, I hope you've had a good week. Um, it's been a week from last time, Wednesday today. Uh, the lecture series that we started last week um, is to do with the fundamentals of calculus. And you want to believe that you find it useful in your medical and research career. Because um, I I think it is important, even as we continue to use uh, computer softwares to feed the data and then get the output, it is important to understand the background of the output that we get from computer generated data. And the reason I thought it's important to me look into the fundamentals of calculus, which as you've seen probably from last week, uh, discussion on differential calculus. It is important understanding the instantaneous rate of growth in terms of the accumulation of, the, of what you're looking at, accumulation, you look at the area under the curve. And when you have an linear line like we well, have drawn here to determine the area that are between point A and point B and since it is not as not be able to calculate using the ordinary algebra you require the concept of calculus. I'm going to calculate. All right, Sarah Kate, I hear you, Vivian, and Project, to be outside the area of the calf. And this concept then, area of the calf, becomes important for you to know how to calculate, how to determine area under the calf of a calf that is a nonlinear calf. This is a nonlinear calf non-linear car, non-linear function. Therefore, you need the studying of integral calculus. All right. To me, this is very important so that you build sound understanding on how to test hypothesis when you are dealing with dis probability distributions, there are many probability distributions, there are quite a number. So this information becomes very important on how to calculate this area of the curve. Of course, most often than not, you'll be provided with the distribution tables, probability distribution tables, but nonetheless, at the F of master's and doctoral work, you need to understand the basis of determining area of the calf. I think that is important. That's number one. Number two, if you are developing a model of growth, model of growth, in social sciences, you might say the growth in population of a community, for example. In medical research, you might be interested in the growth of a tumor, for example. 
growth of tumors, growth of uh, pathogens, bacteria, viruses, etc. As long as growth of a population which is not constant, it's binomial or exponential growth, exponential growth, again it's time, then you need to understand how to calculate it by use of integral calculus. In the field of pharmacology, and you are doing pharm pharmacokinetics of drugs, pharmacokinetics, administration, distribution, metabolism, and elimination of drugs. In pharmacokinetics of drugs, where you are interested with, from the minute you do a a drug, the way it is distributed in the body, the way it is metabolized in the body, and finally eliminated, you will always have to consider this graph. When you talk about the peak, concentration, vis a -vis time, elimination, administration, and therefore you come across AUC, area under the curve, and therefore the understanding of integral calculus becomes relevant. All right. These are instances that you find the understanding of integral Calculus comes in handy. And I'll take the next one hour taking you through uh, integral calculus. Uh, I 
I'll start by giving you a question. And you try to think through how you can answer it, probably to help you now to appreciate the concept of integral calculus there. And the question I'll put is this. Starting time zero, a virus is multiplying Virus 1.2 T kit. I give it square. Square from square. Seven hours. The amount. Let me let me steal. Allow me to change this sector. Thirteen times zero. The virus is multiplying with the eight given by the following function. Okay, 
to the rate. What is the rate? Be the rate. I want you to write that one, write this one down, think about it, then after give, going through uh, today's lecture, at the end of it all, tell me whether you'll be able to answer this question. Half a nonlinear function, and we are going to call it fx because we've said before that the y is a function of x. So this line represents a function of x. Y is a function of x. And the question is with this kind of uh, uh, a nonlinear function. How would you determine the area between A and B? All right. Now, assume this was x raised to power 2.
and determine the area between x is 1 and x is 2. Determine the area between x, let me even expand it, x is 3. You are given y is equal to x squared. This is the same as saying fx, because y is a function of x, is equal to x squared. Find the area under the curve. between x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 3. x is equal to 1, our x, and this x is equal to 3. Remember, if it was a straight line, let me explain that. If this was a straight line, y and x, and you are looking for two points, a and b, if you have to look for that area, this is a straight line. y is equal to x, for example, you would come and you get area 1 and area 2, this is a triangle, and this is a square, no, it's not a square, this is, this is, it is a rectangle. And you'll find the area of a triangle plus the area of the rectangle and you get the area under the straight line. However, in this case, it is not so because you cannot draw a rectangle here. Because it keeps on changing. So you need a different way of determining the area under this curve. How do you do that? This is where you introduce a concept of integral calculus. B, A, function of X, function of X, multiplied by change in X. Remember, remember this. If we had x and y here, and you're saying you are a and you are b, and assume the y was not changing, it was a straight line then we will be talking about this area here and this is the area will be 
this change in change in x here and this change in y here and therefore the area will be change in y multiplied by change in x which is equal to change in y dot change in x if it was a straight line this would be the answer area is change in y change in y this length uh, the length times the width length times width would be the area in the same manner therefore the area here would be change in x dx and change in y but the y is changing from here this point b to point a which is not a straight line it is a nonlinear curved line and therefore because of that we put calculus and say it is from b to a from b to a function of x multiplied by function of function of y multiplied by function of x this is how we uh, this is the formula for integral calculus this is an integral sign and this is what you call the integral yes the b is the upper limit a is the lower limit this y is what you call the integ integrand And the formula is this, this is equal to GB minus G A. What are G? I've introduced a new term. This the B is there and the A is here. I've introduced the term G. What is G? G, where G is the anti-derivative, anti-derivative. The G is the anti-derivative. anti-derivative of fx where g is the derivative of fx what does that one mean? In our case here, where y is equal to x squared, then in our case here, it is going to be then three. And the one here, these are limits, upper limits and lower limits. Function of x is x squared. x squared dx. Mm. 
we have replaced fx with what is equal to this is x squared. And this, the antiderivative of fx is antiderivative of x squared. How we do it is the antiderivative of x squared is x squared, you add plus 1, then we divide by the same power. This is an assignment. This is an assignment that I need you to do right away so that I get to know whether you understood the power rule. The power rule and how to apply in calculating the area under the curve from point x0 to point x7 for equation y is is equal to 1.2 uh, x squared. Remember y is the same as fx is our function is this fx is 1.2 multiplied by x squared want to you to send your answer once you are done with this question finding out the area that will come for this function for this equation y is equal to 1.2 x squared I want you to send your answer here so that I get to know whether we are together
Yes, um, based on the example I've given you before, I want you to find the area to the calf for this equation, y is 1.2 multiplied by x squared from x0 to x7. And I want you to send your response. Let me know whether we are, you are still getting us from this side to well. Yvonne, let me get to know whether you are getting us from this side. Same with Ruth, Joy, Diani. You are getting me from this side. Um, I'm therefore waiting for the, your answer to this question so that we move on.
All right. Um, yes, we've had uh, uh, we've struggled with the network here today, and I know it's been tough for you. But I want to believe now the network is good. Probably I need to take you through very quickly again on what we've covered so that at least you you be able to answer this question. All right, um, allow me to take you through again on what I've covered with you this morning. It's, I'm going to be more repeating myself, but uh, for the fact that you've not uh, you've had a very bad network, let's hope that um, it's going to be okay. All right, when we talk about integral calculus, Integral calculus, it helps us to, to determine area under the curves. A U C area under the curve. And area under the curve when we we are saying that variable y is a function of variable x and therefore over a span of time y will have accumulated with certain amount accumulation what I mean is this if this is y and this is x and this function, line is a function of x, I would want to calculate if, if x, for example, is time, and y is number of bacteria growth, and we have from one hour to three hours to that hour of growth. How many bacteria you have accumulated within this span? I only need to determine the area under the curve here. And therefore, understanding how to go about this is important in science in that respect. I've also talked about if you are doing studies on drugs and you give a bolus dose of a drug and you monitor it over time and this drug once you give is also getting excreted then you may be using this you may be able to determine the concentration of the amount of drug in the body using this concept. Therefore, it's important in science. How do we therefore calculate area under the curves? Again, I said when you start studying the probability function and we are testing hypotheses, we will be looking at values that we call Z scores or T scores. When you talk about z-scores or t-scores and look for them from the probability distribution tables, the probability distribution tables talk about the area under the curve on the left side. Therefore, area under the curve will keep on coming up and therefore it's important to know how to determine the area under the curve. And this is how we do it. As 
assume let me erase this one so that I give you the exact an example assume we have this graph of y and x and we have y is x squared or something like that all right and i tell you to calculate the area of the curve between x is 1 and x here is 3 calculate area of the curve area the curve this one this is a function this is the same as saying our fx is equal to x squared it's the same as saying this so calculate the area of the curve between x is 1 and x is 3 and this is how you do it you write the integral 3 and 1 multiplied by dx and this according to the power rule we say the same as now we will start 1 3 fx is x squared dx we replace fx with x squared here that becomes the equation and then according to the power rule it is x 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 and then you put a line 3 and 1 which is x to power 3 over 3 3 and 1 there to represent 3 and 1 this component here is what you call anti-derivative of fx this is an anti-derivative of fx and therefore that you should know and therefore this becomes replace x with 3 and that will be 3, 3 cubed over 3 minus 1 cubed over 3 1 cubed over 3 this is going to be 27 over 3 minus 1 over 3 it will be 26 over 3 which is 8 point a seven. Eight point six seven. And that's the answer to that. So the area of the curve here is equal to eight point six seven. Whichever unit you are going to give your x. So what I've said is this. This is the integral sign. Upper limit is 3. Lower limit is 3. fx dx, we call it the integral. Integral. And then the next is to replace fx with the function is x squared dx. 
then you find the antiderivative of x squared and antiderivative of x squared is by adding 1 to the power so it's 2 plus 1 then you divide by the same power 2 plus 1 so it's 2 plus 1 is 3 then you divide by 2 plus 1 is 3 so x power 3 over 3 then you put boundary 3 to 1 x 3 over 3 is what you call the antiderivative and sometimes it's called the g the g meaning the anti, just the antiderivative so by following this integral calculus way of calculating area of the curve you can calculate area of the, under the curve of any equation you get And the question was, the question was this. Yes, uh, Karubo, you ask me what is dx? What does it mean? Uh, From this, let me let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Turbo. Four. In a sec. Allow me to do this. If I started here, if I had y and x here, and I'm saying one to three here. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I know why there is issue. If the y value was constant, if that was the function of x, is not changing, but x. Let me put up to 3, up to 2, 1 to 2. I want to determine the area under there. I want to determine the area down under here. Let's even put 3. The area down between x is 1 and x is 3. This area would be this length times this length. This length here is the change in x, which is equal to 3 minus 2, which is 3 minus 1, sorry, which is 2. And this one will be changed in y which is from here to here or y 1 minus y 0 here this one so in this case the area would be that distance plus times the distance of x all right and that would be the area of this rectangle but now we have a curve which is not a rectangle. How determine that? It is this distance from here to here which is represented by change in x, dx. And change from here to here is represented by change in y. So it's change in y, dy, which is a, the same as the function of x, multiplied by change in x. And that's where dx comes from. D 
B is change in X. Change in X, that's what you're asking. What, is, what does B imply in BX? It is change in X. question I have with you is this. Using the same formula, find area at a curve given function, given fx is equal to 1.2x squared, following the same rule. Following the same rule of uh, determining antiderivatives, the g and inserting it, inserting x, find area the calculation fx for uh, between x is 0 and x is 7. The limits.
Kerubo, you are asking that I take you through again, uh, through the power rule. Let us once more go through the concept of integral calculus on how to determine the area under the curve of a function where you have an x axis and a y axis. You have such a cuff where the cuff itself is a function of x. And you are saying you want the area of the cuff from point A to point B. This is how we derive it. The Integral. This sign is called the integral sign. You put B there and A here. The upper limit, the lower limit, the integral of f x d x. You are calculating area under the curve. fx dx and is equal to ga gb rather gb minus G A where G is the anti derivative of Fx. What does it mean where G is anti derivative of Fx? Assume fx is equal to x squared. That's an assumption. Then fx dx. is going to be let me even say not square raised to power n raised to power n n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 This is our G and is equal to antiderivative of Fx. 
and this is what I've called power rule. Power rule. Therefore, given y is equal to x squared, calculate area at a curve between x is 1 and x is 2. Put integral 2 and 1 function x function dx which is 2 1 x squared dx then you do x 2 plus 1 over x over 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 which is x to power 3 2 and 1 x 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 which is the same as x 2 1 x to power 3 over over 3 here which again we can write as x 3 over 3 2 and 1 all these are the same therefore x 3 over 3 from 2 to 1 is going to be 2 raised to power 3 over 3 minus 1 raised to power 3 over 3 which is 2 times 2, 4 times 2, 8 over 3 minus 1 over 3 which is 7 over 3 7 over 3 is 7 divided by 3 2 points Two point three three three, and that is our answer for area under the curve for this equation. The power rule, the power rule is that if you have from here. From here, 
now come and insert our fx to be x and dx all right fx function of x is x raised to power n n can be any uh, number all right we are developing our power x can be any number so you just replace f x with x square x raised power n because f x is equal to x raised power n and n can be any number so it will be x raised to power n dx and the power rule is that when you are looking for antiderivative we add this one you have to know to remove this integral you add the n here you add one and you divide by the same n plus one so you have removed the integral sign and therefore this becomes uh, it's basically that then we go and apply this power when you are removing the integral sign and simplifying this equation you simplify by adding n to power 1 n plus 1 and you divide by the same n plus 1 and I've given you the example where our xn is x raised to power 2 so you come and simply insert our x here n is 2 you add 1 over 2 plus 1 so x raised to power 3 over 3 and now you can insert if these are the boundaries we are talking about 2 and 1 2 and 1 you insert and say it's g because this is now the our g gb minus ga gb our b is 2 our a is 1 so it's going to be 2 and 1 from 1 to 2 x is 2 to power 3 divided by 3 according to this equation minus you insert with 1 and you get the answer you did not pass you say it understood all right Remember the question I had given you about the virus growing at the rate of a the virus was growing at the rate of a amount is 1.2 t raised to power 2 at the rate at which the virus is growing. And I had asked after seven hours what will be the A? Now what I wanted to do is to see it like this. Given Y is equal to 1.2 X squared. Find area of the curve between x is 0 and x is 7 using this method. If you have understood this, then you will be able to calculate the a you see area at the curve for this equation y is equal to 1.2 x squared between 0 and 7 using the rule of x n plus 1 n minus 2 and this is the g 7 minus g 0 
y is equal to 1.2x squared. Therefore, integral of 7, 0, 1.2x squared dx is equal to 1.2 x to power 3 over 3 7 0 which is the same as 1.2 multiply by 7 to power 3 over 3 minus 1.2 multiply by 0 to power 3 over 3 Which is 12 multiplied by 7 times 7 times 7 7 times 7 times 7 is 3 for 3 divided by 3 minus 1.2 times 0. Three forty three divided by three one point two times one fourteen point three three minus zero because this is zero. And the answer is And that's 7.2. And that's 7.2. And I think every one of you got it correct. And that's 7.2. Very good. So, what is one that 7.2? Is the area the curve? For y is equal to 1.2x squared the area of the curve between 0 the area of the curve between 0 and 7 a u c is equal to 1 that 7.2 as the area of the curve this area. So you'll be able to determine the area that comes from 0 to 7 of this function. And remember the question I had given you about the virus multiplying at A is equal to 1.2 T squared. How many of them will be there after Seven days, it can be T, it can be days, it can be hours, it can be seconds, depending on what is defined. If we started with one particle virus here, one virus particle, 
at time zero, the time of inoculation, and it is growing at this rate, amount is it being determined by a function of time, which is t squared multiplied by a constant of 1.2, you realize this, this is not a constant growth. This is an exponential growth designated by a square. For every second that passes, the rate multiplied by 1.2 of that second is squared. So the second second will be second second squared. The third one will be 1.24 squared. The fourth one will be 1.216 squared. This is exponential. And therefore, by the seventh second, if this t is in second, then you have one that is 7.2 virus particle in that population. So we start now understanding why it's important to understand the integration, the integral calculus. It will help us to calculate the area of the curves. And I've given an example of the growth of a population growth of a population to understand the issue of uh, clearance of the drug from the body if you know the function at which the clearance is taking place it will show you how tumor can grow and you get the size if you know the model of growth and therefore the integral calculus has its place in research and I also say that when you start doing the distribution, the probability distribution, we will be required to know the area of the curve from a certain uh, line, which you call the z scores downward. So that if this is a z score that is at this point, you will be required to know the area of the curve on the left side. And that is given in the probability distribution tables. But at this level, or you need to understand where it comes from. Even if you see it in the probability distribution tables, you need to know where it came from. That's the essence of understanding the integral calculus. I don't want to go past there. What I require of you is uh, I'll try and send you some few more questions. And I would want you to really go back to what I've done here, try to understand the concept behind integral calculus. How to calculate the area of the curve. Curves that are of non-linear function. Curves that are not linear, they are non-linear function. And these are very common in science. So I wish to leave there and ask that you give yourself time into understanding the integral calculus. So we have done the fundamentals of differential calculus. Remember I said differential calculus, we try to establish the instantaneous rate of change. If the rate of growth, the rate of change, the instantaneous rate of growth or rate of change, and, and uh, that's differential calculus, then integral calculus, the area of the curve which constitutes the accumulation of what you are looking at. If the population of uh, the people, population of uh, pathogens, it is area of the curve that you are interested in. So the rate, the change, the rate change or the accumulation. Differential calculus, integral calculus. Alright, I'll end there today. I don't want to take longer than that.